Welcome to Michigan's World War I Centennial News Report for February 2014. I'm your host, Dennis Skupinski. This program is about the Selfridge Military Air Museum and Air Park, located on Selfridge Air National Guard Base near Mount Clemens in Michigan, and is the primary outreach effort of the Michigan Air National Guard Historical Association. Selfridge Air National Guard Base is named after First Lieutenant Thomas E. Selfridge. Selfridge was detailed for aeronautical duty in April 1908 after being an assistant to Professor Alexander Graham Bell who was conducting aeronautical experiments in Nova Scotia. He was killed on September 17, 1908 while flying as a passenger for Orville Wright at Fort Myer, Virginia. The origins of Selfridge Air National Guard Base date to 1916 when a large tract of land on Lake St. Clair was acquired by the Packard Motor Company at the urging of President Henry B. Joy, who took great interest in aviation and led the company to begin developing aircraft engines for use in aircraft engaged in World War I combat. In spring of 1917, lobbying began in Washington to locate a military airfield at the site of Joy Aviation Field on Lake St. Clair. In May 1917, it was announced that Joy Aviation Field would be included as a training camp as part of the expansion of the Air Service, becoming one of only nine military airfields in the country at the time. The United States Army leased 640 acres of land, and construction commenced immediately to provide the necessary roads and rail access to the site. Within a month, the newspaper was reporting that a thousand men were at work at the field, constructing hangars, barracks, supply depots, machine shops, and a school building. On July 9, 1917, the first training craft occurred as JN-4D arrived. By the end of the war, the base had over a thousand enlisted men and 200 officers. It had trained 72 pilots, 700 mechanics, and over a thousand men had attended the aerial gunnery school. The end of the war, however, produced some major changes from a training field producing mechanics and gunners Selfridge became a pursuit fighter field. Today, Selfridge is an Air National Guard base. A businessman in Detroit, and he thought it was glamorous to go flying, as all aviators did at that time. And uh, he turned from a ferry pilot into a combat unit and uh, was shot down and killed and he had written all the letters home uh, to his family and his dad said he would publish them and he had, at some point in the process he, he disagreed and uh, was not published until after he died. These are all the things that he did on a daily basis over there and what's really interesting about it is his dad was so wealthy that he just had one book printed for each member of the family. Anyway, they built this uh, memorial to him in France where he was shot down. And uh, they just, within the past two years, they had a refreshing or a restoration of that. RSPIAR, he was a, uh, one on Macomb County, there's quite a history of the Spire family and the judicial system. At the Selfridge Military Air Museum, besides having items from the First World War, they also have insignias from units that were stationed at Selfridge during its long military history. The Military Air Museum is open from April till October on the weekends from 12 noon until 4.30 p.m. or by appointment. Admission is $4. The museum is a must-see for anybody who is interested in the First World War or early military aviation. The museum does a great job telling its history, from its early days as Joy Field to its conversion to a military base known as Selfridge Field. It has a number of displays such as maps, photographs, and uniforms. What I found most interesting in the museum were the displays they had dedicated to pilots and early aviation. I enjoyed looking at the uniforms and also the equipment early pilots used during the First World War. Last 
One of the rare items in the museum is the Liberty V12 engine. The Liberty V12 engine was designed by the Packard Motor Company and made in Detroit, Michigan. The Liberty V12 engine production was important because it linked the automotive industry to the aviation industry and 20 years later would be the basis for Detroit to become the arsenal of democracy. Yeah. 
from California and they were in uh, their fifth scale in metric so we had to blow all these parts up and make them full size and uh, the uh, thing was started with the fuselage finished the fuselage went on with the wings and the tail like the tail was a First, first thing to be built. These are all fiberglass. We really uh, duplicated it just as exactly as it was. The SPAD-13 is a reproduction of the World War I fighter plane that was used at Selfridge Field to train pilots. The SPAD team, which was responsible for the construction of this aircraft, paid attention to detail even down to the smallest gauges and wires. The SPAD-13 was a French-designed and French-manufactured airplane. The United States used this airplane because they could not produce enough fighters of their own. This was the most common fighter on the Western Front for the United States Air Corps. This particular unit, the 17th Aero Squadron, has the insignia of the Snow Owl, as you can see here, painted on the side of the fuselage of the SPAD-13. The display here shows how they would start a SPAD-13. The pilot would be sitting in the cockpit while the mechanic would turn the propeller in order to prime the rotary engine so it could start. The executive director of the Military Museum is Lieutenant Colonel Nigro. One of the volunteers who helped keep the museum running is Rob Sandstrom. The Air Park, which is the outdoor display of aircraft at the museum, has over 30 aircraft on display, which you can walk around and look at. It's a long, long march. 